Hi, this is your host Sapna Bhartia and welcome to TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Justin Mitchell, founder of Coding for Entrepreneurs. Justin, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks, Swap. Thanks for inviting me. I'm excited to be here and chat with you. So first of all, tell us, you know, what is Coding for Entrepreneurs? About 10 years ago, maybe a little bit more than that, I was starting a business with a friend of mine and he was incredibly technical. I was not. And he had to get a job to stay in the US. And that left me with, do I continue with this business or not? I decided I want to continue with the business. So that meant I was going to learn how to code myself. I did in less time than I ever thought was possible. I was able to rebuild everything in Python, which is really what resonated with me. And then once I did all that, I had this aha moment. I need to teach other non-technicals like I was how to do all these things. So I, I wrote this class and I put it together in a weekend. And then here I am 10 years later, still doing it. Um, so um, yeah, that's, that's kind of the short way of how I got here. Um, and I mean, every little bit along the way, it's like the more I learn, the more I want to teach. So it's, it's, uh, it's a really exciting journey. So is the idea behind this initiative, this project is to help developers or help, you know, kind of founders, creators of companies, as you know, you yourself uh, talk about. Because sometimes when it comes to small and medium businesses, it's a, in most cases, it's one man show every, that one person is doing all, literally everything, you know, all the way from marketing to sales to <laughs> writing code for that. Yeah. Yep. So um, initially I set out to help non-technical entrepreneurs. Um, that was my goal because that's what I was. Now I still have that as part of the DNA because it always will be. Um, but the other part is also helping any kind of developer get better at these skills um, that I'm so passionate about, right? So it's really morphed into a, a variety of things. Now, if you are an entrepreneur and you are a solo guy doing all sorts of things, I think it's important to um, actually have your hand in understanding how some of these things are executed, right? So even like video recording, like what we're doing right now, you don't have to be an expert at it, but you should dabble a little bit so you know what's going on so you can better manage the process. I feel the exact same way as writing software and building actual software software applications. How would you define infrastructure as code and what value does it bring, bring to developers or DevOps and operators teams? Infrastructure as code to me is instead of logging into the console to spin up all of your services, that's one piece, right? So instead of logging in the console, you have a big document that really tells the service that you're gonna use all of the things you need from it. And the reason you have it as a document like this is because you can now have version control just with provisioning these services, right? So if you need 10 virtual machines, you can use this document for that, right? So that's one piece of infrastructure as code. The other piece is how these are actually configured, right? So each virtual machine, you have 10 virtual machines, Three of them, you want to be web servers. One of them, you want to be a load balancer. Two of them, you want to be a worker and all that. That's then the other piece of infrastructure as code that is, again, a bunch of documents that you just write out exactly how you want these things to work. And once you apply this on both sides, infrastructure as code makes all that happen. And it does it in a way that's clean, easy, repeatable, and also something that's resumable which I think we can talk about as well. Let's also talk about the importance why software developers should learn these tools. There's so many reasons to this answer to me. Um, one of them being, if you're just generally interested in how your software actually runs, going deeper and deeper is something that I highly recommend. And learning infrastructure as code tools will help at least get part of the way there, right? You probably at one point want to also do everything manually. So you have a really good grasp of all of it, uh, but that's going even deeper, right? So I think that the interest needs to be there. That's one thing, but really the stability of your system, that's what it's really all about is to make sure your system is incredibly stable and you're not necessarily relying on a third party services in the way that you can't just switch to another service, right? So using these tools correctly, IAC tools, you can switch between cloud providers pretty easily, or you can use a lot of them all at once, also pretty easily with the same sort of tools, right? So like Terraform, for example, if you want three virtual machines on Linode, no problem. If you want to use AWS for S3, also no problem. And that can all be on one document of course, there's some configuration to get there, but that gives you a lot of flexibility over your infrastructure. 
And let's say, for instance, AWS S3 goes down for some reason. Uh, it's unlikely that it's going to happen, but these things happen. Everything breaks all the time. That's their, that's their ethos over there. Anyway, so if S3 goes down on AWS and you want to just really quickly switch over to Linode's object storage or DigitalOcean Spaces or whatever, you can do that. Infrastructure code makes it really easy to make that switch. Granted, some of the data loss might be in there and stuff like that. There's some downsides, but um, that that ability to do that is really important. So if you're a software developer and you're like, oh, I need, I need static files. Where am I going to put my static files for my virtual machine? I just laid out a, an example of, of how you can use infrastructure as code to be able to move around. The other thing is when you're talking to, if you're a freelancer or you're talking to a manager about all this stuff um, or, or it's your own business, you have to make a good case for why you need to learn infrastructure as code or why you're going to leverage these things. And to me, it's about having a stable system in place. And if you're a software de developer and you're too reliant on assuming that other developers or other DevOps people are doing things correctly, um, it, it's gonna leave you in a precarious spot when things go down because then management's gonna go like, hey, why aren't the static files loading? What's going on? You need to fix it. And you're like, oh, I don't know how to fix it. That's another reason to, to be using these tools is to be able to recover a lot quicker or, you know, kind of manage the whole system better. I think I said that a hundred times already, but that's the point. Earlier this year, you released a series of courses called Try ISC with Linode. You covered a lot of tools, of course, Terraform, Ansible, Puppet Bowl, Chef, and SaltStack. Uh, first of all, tell us, you know, why you chose these particular tools? Is it because of their popularity or, of course, they are kind of de facto in their own space or uh, uh, they do bring a lot of value to developers? Yeah, so each tool has its own flavor of how it does something, right? These tools are, are the most popular and probably the most established. There are a few new tools in the space that are really exciting that I want to learn more about and at some point I'll need to cover. But the general idea, these are very popular tools. They've been established for quite some time now. But the reason I covered so many of them is because of that flavor, right? So if you're a Python developer, you know, um, you might really stick with Ansible. You might really, really like Ansible or SaltStack, right? Um, and that's the thing. It's like, maybe you're not a Python developer and maybe you like something else or maybe you've never even touched Python, but trying out these different flavors, I think is really important to see which of these tools really resonate with you. And what I wanted to do with that series is give you a introduction to that tool, but doing something very practical and that's deploying a Docker-based web application so that you can actually do it on all of these different tools from zero so that you can pick which flavor you like and dive deeper. Because I think, you know, I think I, I want to ignite that spark of diving deeper into a tool if you really, really like it. And then hopefully I can be along the way uh, of your journey for that. But of course, there's so many other great uh, tools and resources to learn even more on these tools. So if you look at, you know, we talked about CNC or Cloud Native, the whole landscape is changing, the rules, the tags, the titles are changing. It's it, the lines are blurring whether you're a developer or DevOps or DevSecOps, you know, kind of, it's not about, you know, full stack developer, but still, you know, or unicorn developer, but still you do have to do a lot of things. And in some cases, uh, developers, they tend to kind of stay away from, infrastructure, they just want to deal with APIs uh, to get the services they need. Uh, but I think it's also important for them to to know about, you know, uh, uh, these, you know, tools or technologies like infrastructure as code. So talk about why they should, you know, uh, learn or know about these things. Sure. Let's start with something even more fundamental. Why even learn how to code? Why, why no software at all, right? There's no code tools that are fantastic that basically do the work for you, right? So that's one layer higher than just using APIs directly yourself, right? And I think so much of it is about unleashing your own creativity to solve novel problems and hopefully either save a bunch of money or just bring a bunch of value. So you can use no-code tools to bring a bunch of value to automate things, right? But if you want to bring even more value, I think you need to dive a little bit deeper and actually write the software yourself. That way you can start interacting with these APIs and not necessarily leveraging somebody else's value, what they thought through their ideas, right? Which of course you could use these things together, especially once you start knowing how to write code, you can use no code tools together, right? But we're not talking about no code. We wanna talk about the infrastructure as code. So why even go there, 
Why not just use a bunch of APIs? Well, there's a lot of business case to use a bunch of APIs. Absolutely. Whatever gets you going up faster. But the thing is, when these APIs go down, what do you do? What are you left with, right? We needed to actually have some resiliency built in to handle that problem. The other thing is, what if a company that you use that's that's an API service, they do something that you just simply don't agree with, right? Your team does not want to support that that team at all any longer. What do you do? How do you how do you recover from that? So if you want to move your virtual machines from one place to another, what do you do, right? Uh, the other thing is platform um, as like you know platform tools like Heroku, fantastic tools. It's really nice to spin something up quickly. But the problem is you don't actually have control over how your application is running. So if there's other services that you need for that application to run, you don't have full control over it. You're using their control, right? Their system, what they've set up. Now, this is good and bad. There's some pluses and minuses of this, and there's a ways around it. Docker helps a lot. Um, but overall, it still is leaving you stuck with what they laid out for infrastructure. Or if you want to actually design something that works one way for a certain part of the world or another way for another part, how do you go about doing that? Like you need to be able to control the infrastructure to make those sorts of things happen. Or the other part is something that we're not really discussing. What if you're trying to do something new and novel in artificial intelligence or blockchain that no offerings out there can do it except for using an actual raw virtual machine? Yet another reason to, to actually know how to control the infrastructure itself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the software developer that's hesitant to jump into infrastructure as code, I totally get it. It took me a while to really dive in and, and get to know it myself, but I made so many mistakes trying to provision virtual machines to just run Jingo. The mistakes didn't happen when I was doing it. It was six months later when I was coming back to it. I'm like, what is this script that I wrote to make this thing work? It's not working. I needed something a little bit better, something a little bit more opinionated. And that's why these infrastructure as code tools are like really, really useful for that as well. There's one more thing that is happening. Number one is there is a shortage of skills, you know, folks who do have, I mean, as we were talking earlier, some of these technologies come so fast that you barely know people who know about the technologies, forget about those who can manage them in production. So can you, given that, you know, skill gap, uh, and also, as you said, you know, folks who want to run their own companies or developers, they should know about these technologies, but sometimes these can be very, very intimidating also. So can you talk about, you know, uh, or, you know, what kind of advice you have for such either business owners or developers who kind of look at these technologies and get all intimidated? Uh, so how would you convince them so that, hey, you know, you should, you should learn about these technologies? Yeah, the skill, the skill gap, problem is is tricky because on one hand if you don't know anything about like even just writing a simple python application or javascript application or ruby if you don't know those things it might be really intimidating but if you know those things really well then taking one step further it's not as intimidating but my advice is if you have any sort of web application which you probably do it would be well worth your time to learn a little bit about how these things are managed and provisioned and configured, learning CI, CD, like even just learning conceptual things will help you a lot with the management process. But I think these tools, especially the infrastructure as code tools, I think those are very little programming, actually. A lot of the logic is already thought out for you. So you're really wanting the result. That's kind of what this is all about. You're looking for a result, right? So as a manager, as an entrepreneur, as a, you know, as a business, like you want something from, let's say Linode or AWS, you want something from them. You want to store all your static files somewhere, or you want a virtual machine to run your web applications, or you need a database solution, right? These are the things that you want. Infrastructure as code is not about actually writing a bunch of code to make those things happen. Instead, it's like, hey, give me a database. That's it. That's all you're saying. You don't really care how it's, it's declarative. You don't care how it gets there. It just comes, right? So the reason I'm bringing that up is because you as a manager are going to ask for, hey, I want this. Okay, great. That's what infrastructure code as code tools do is like you want Nginx running on three virtual machines. 
you don't have to worry about how all that actually happens. You just say, that's what you want. You hit apply and it does it, right? It's, it's actually gets to be that simple. Um, so when it talks, when we talk about building a Django application in Python, that is not as simple. I can't just say, oh, I need a, I need a web page with a form that collects data. It's not really that simple. It actually takes a lot of time to make that happen and all the logic and the control flow, right? Um, whereas infrastructure as code, I just say what I want and it makes it happen. So I think actually IAC tools are quite a bit more simple to execute and to understand than trying to learn how to code and build web applications. Um, so just, I would, you know, my advice is just generally just dive in and, and, and try things out. And the reason I gave you all those different flavors with both the video series and the ebook is so you can do that. So you can try these different things out. Um, but realistically, if you are hiring somebody that is going to be building out your infrastructure or building out a web application for you um, or any other kind of software, I think it's really critical that you understand how, at least at least on a, on a small level, how all of these things work. Because when that person leaves, and I say when on purpose, because everyone's eventually going to go on to something different, including you as a founder or a founder coder or whatever, eventually that role is going to be needed to be replaced. And when that happens, you're going to need to have something in place that's going to ensure that the transition is not catastrophic. I think infrastructure as code tools are fundamental to that, right? Even software, even web applications themselves aren't as fundamental as the infrastructure as code tools uh, when it comes to, to doing all this stuff. So uh, to me, if you're, if you're really hesitant in this area, you're hesitant because well, maybe because you're afraid of really just getting into it and you're afraid of like breaking things, but that's all part of the process. We all went through that as non-technical people, as technical, even to this day when I'm learning something new, um, I'm not afraid of it anymore. I just want to break everything and find out all of the problems, all the challenges that come up with doing that. And the reason I create these courses, the reason I teach is because I've gone through all this stuff so I can actually show you how to break those things in a way that makes sense that you can recover. Um, yeah, I could probably talk for hours on, on different various things on advice on, on, on actually getting into getting your hands wet with uh, or hands dirty with all these, uh, all these different tools. But um, the general idea is just get it started, break, break things. Everything's easily to be recovered. Um, you can always go back. You can always start over. Uh, but it's really important to understand how all of your software is running. And I think infrastructure as code tools do that. Justin, thank you so much for taking time out today. And of course, talk about this initiative that you're doing with Linode to help folks understand not only the importance of these IOC tools, but also actually help them how they can get started and also kind of become master of what they are doing. So thanks for sharing those insights. And I'd love to have you back on the show. As you said, you know, there are so many other tools we can talk about. So thank you for your time today. Thank you so much, Swap. I had a great time. Um, hopefully I didn't go too long on any given question, but I really had so much fun and I definitely want to talk to you again and uh, just dive into all the different things that we can.